The last topic I'm going to talk about in our CDs, in DC circuit is dielectrics. And this is kind of a neat topic. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but it gives us the first glimpse of uh, something called an induced field. We have an induced electric field. We start out by considering a parallel plate capacitor in a vacuum. And remember that a vacuum is a perfect insulator. And when we connect the parallel plates with the EMF and the resistor, then it makes one side positive and the other side negative. And this creates an electric field. Okay, so by now this is nothing new. I'm about to change this so, though, so I'm going to call this electric field E0. And then on the right plate we'll have positive Q0 charge built up, and then on the left plate we would have negative Q0. And then that charge, Q0, is equal to the capacitance times V0, and V0 then is the voltage between the plates, or the potential difference between the plates. And when the capacitor is fully charged, V0 is equal to the EMF that we used to connect it. Then I'm going to actually remove the EMF and the resistor and fill the vacuum with an insulator. So even though the EMF and the resistor have been removed, that charge that we deposited on both of the plates, that we basically separated from the conductors, remains on those plates, so the plates are still charged. And I'm going to use the color green here to show that, or to represent, I guess, that I'm filling up this space with an insulator. At this point, if we take a voltmeter and connect it at the bottom, so I would have one wire connected to one side and another wire connected to the other side, then the measured voltage is less than the original voltage. And then the question is, why? And this is where it gets a little bit interesting. So at this point, the charge has not changed. I can write that Q is still Q0. What happens, though, is that this insulator is inside an electric field, so the insulator gets polarized at the level of the individual atoms, and that sets up an induced electric field, E induced, inside the insulator. So I'll just show a handful, a small handful of atoms getting polarized in here, but this would apply through the entire insulator, for all of the atoms in the insulator. And it's basically just that the electrons in the atomic orbit feel the influence of E0, the external electric field, and they react to that. The electrons move a little bit to the right, which polarizes the atoms, and that is what sets up this induced electric field, and the induced electric field goes in the opposite direction, from positive to negative. You're just adding up all of the tiny pieces to get an overall net induced electric field, E induced. Then, when we move from the left plate to the right plate in terms of measuring voltage, we have to consider the total electric field, which is E0 and E induced. So I will call that total electric field the net electric field, so E net, and it's a vector equation. We have the vector sum of E0 plus the vector of E induced. But notice that E0 and E induced are in opposite directions. So in terms of magnitudes, I can write that the magnitude of the net electric field is equal to the magnitude of E0 minus the magnitude of the induced electric field. And it turns out that the induced field is weaker than the original field. And if I just switch notation and just drop the vector arrow, then I can write that E net, therefore, has to be less than E naught, because there is some induced electric field. So after inserting the insulator, which is called the dielectric, the net electric field is weaker than it was originally. Then since delta V is equal to negative E times D, and again, I'm just working with the magnitudes, I can write that V naught, well, delta V naught is equal to E naught times D. I can write that delta V is equal to E net times D, where D is the distance between the plates. And I'm going to just let the initial voltage be zero, and therefore I can scrap the delta signs and just compare V naught and V. And that's honestly the way we normally work with this. Technically, we're like I'm starting with the delta V formula here because that's technically what we should be starting with, and it's a good reminder that it's between an initial and final point. 
But when we're talking about the voltage across a capacitor, it's very specifically talking about the voltage between those two plates. So there's no need to really carry the delta in that formula. So we have these two expressions. And since we know that the net electric field, E net, is less than E naught, therefore the voltage must be less than V naught. So then if you remember that Q is equal to CV, and I can rewrite this and isolate the capacitance as Q over V. So C naught then, or the original capacitance is Q naught over V naught. And the new capacitance is Q over V. But remember Q doesn't change, so it's really just Q naught over V. Therefore, remember that V is less than V naught, and because V is in the denominator, the capacitance C is going to be greater than the original capacitance. In general, we get this equation C is equal to kappa times C naught, where C naught is the capacitance with no dielectric, and kappa is something called the dielectric constant. And kappa has no units because it's just a multiplier. We have capacitance on both sides here. And just as an example, here are some dielectric constants for a few common materials. And the reason this is useful in terms of circuits is that increasing the capacitance allows us to store more charge at a given voltage, which then we can use to do various other things within the circuit. And what it means then is that we can build a stronger capacitor in the same amount of space. So one way to increase capacitance is to increase the geometrical properties of it. This is an additional thing that we can do by inserting a insulator, a dielectric, in between the conductive plates of the capacitor. So we can increase the capacitance without actually making it, literally making it bigger. 